Good evening, my dear friends, and welcome to Monday Evening Prayer. And welcome to dear Brother Richard and Sister Pam in California. I hope it's a lot warmer there where you are, dear Pam. It's bitterly cold here, but the sun is still shining. And hello to Sister Sue. And to those not logged in, welcome. I've lit my candle this evening. Excuse me. And we hold one another in prayer. And if you've got a spare candle, I would love you to light a candle so that together we light up the world and we bring in the light of God. And this evening I'm dedicating our prayers for all our friends on social media, our dear brother Skip and Thomas Aquinas Koo on Google Hangouts and all our friends on LinkedIn and Twitter. So we begin this evening by saying, Father, Mother, God, we come into your presence, though we are unworthy because of our human frailty, we know that you love us and that you accept us as we are, a beautiful child of God. Amen. And coming to our little book, oh no, we start with the prologue. I'm away ahead of myself this evening. It's been a busy day. We enter the eternal and infinite God with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother, God, the earthly Mother and all the great Masters, and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching, and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Monday evening we commune with the Angel of Peace, saying, Angel of Peace, Peace. Angel of peace, be always everywhere. We now reflect the crescent moon and the moonlight, invoking and visualizing universal peace in all spheres of life and for the whole family of God, regardless of their belief, their color of skin, or their lifestyle choice. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now for our opening prayer and thanksgiving from the little book of Celtic prayers from Iona. And let us see where we are. Here we go. O Christ of the least and the homeless, O Christ of the lost and betrayed, come close to us this night that we may come close to you. As you watched us with care at our soul's shaping, look on us now with grace, as you blessed us with light at the sun's rising, shine on us now with love. That is a lovely prayer. I'm going to pray the beautiful prayer of protection for all light bringers of peace, including all our members and friends and all those who wish us well. In the name of all that is, we draw a bloodline by faith around ourselves, our health, our abundance, our home, our partner, our family, our life's work, our friends, our clients, and their associates together with the brothers and sisters of the Teo community of St. Francis, we draw a bloodline by faith knowing that there is power, wondrous power, in the blood of the cosmic Christ Jesus, and neither Satan nor any of his co-workers, dark energies or entities can ever cross such a bloodline. Amen. We believe in thee, beloved Sananda, Lord Jesus, and we trust in thee, come to the aid of our weakness and our incapacity. Grant that we may be able to make thee known and loved by all men, and that confident in the immensity of thy love, we may be able to combat the evil which is in us and in the entire world. For thy glory, and our salvation. And there's a beautiful prayer here that we used to say as nursing monks 
for protection on the wards. And I'd like to read it to you now. It's the prayer to the Cosmic Christ, our healer. In the comfort of your love, I pour out to you, my brother Jesus, the memories that haunt me, the anxieties that perplex me, the fears that stifle me, the sickness that prevails upon me, and the frustrations of all the pain that weaves about within me. Lord, help me to see your peace in my turmoil, your compassion in my sorrow, your forgiveness in my weakness, and your love in my need. Touch me, O Christ, with your healing power and with your strength so that I may return to you a child of God, whole, perfect, and complete. I'd like to read to you, if I may, <coughs> excuse me, a reading from Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be blameless and holy before him. He destined us in love to be his sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he bestowed upon us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood. He has made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of his will according to his purpose which he set forth at the beginning of time in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him. Our short scripture reading this evening is from Colossians chapter 1 verse 11. We ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will, with all the wisdom and understanding that his, that his spirit gives. Then you will be able to live as the Lord wants and always do what pleases the Lord. Your lives will be fruitful in all kinds of good works. And yes, you will grow in your knowledge of God May you be made strong with all the strength which comes from his glorious might, so that you may be able to endure everything with patience. And as a beautiful reflection from Jelaluddin Rumi, which I would love to share with you. I died as a mineral and became a plant. I died as a plant and rose as an animal. I died as an animal and I was a man. Why should I fear? When was I less by dying? Yet once more I shall die as man to soar with angels blessed. But even from an angel I must pass on, except God must perish. When I have sacrificed my angel soul, I shall become what no mind has ever conceived. Jalaluddin Rumi. And somehow I'm just getting an impromptu nudge to read this beautiful prayer by Swami Vivekananda. I shall go to the mosque of the Muslim. I shall enter the Christian's church and kneel before the crucifix. I shall enter the Buddhist temple and take refuge in the Buddha. I shall go into the forest and sit down in meditation with the Hindu. And in addition, I shall keep my heart open for all that may come in the future. Is God's book finished? 
or is revelation still going on? Salutations to the prophets of the past, to all the great ones of the present, and to all who are to come in the future. I was guided to read that because this morning, whilst I was waiting for Brother Rob at the hospital, it was about two hours, but I went for a long walk up this huge hill up, right up into the countryside with the two dogs. And when I came back, I had a chance to sit down and wait for Brother Rob to come from the eye clinic. And I met various people and said, who are you? Um, why are you wearing that dress? I said, oh, I slept in and I forgot to change for my fancy dress outfit. Hello. And then another lady came up to me. She was waiting for the bus to take her into the town, the local village. And she said, um, what religion are you? Quite, quite curt. I said, I'm a Catholic Christian, but I embrace all faiths. But how can you? Jesus said, only those who proclaim Jesus as Lord will go to heaven. Well, I nearly fell through the concrete floor. I said, I used to believe that as a nursing monk in the Catholic Church. But then I realized that we are all God's children, though we call him by a different name. I mentioned the Abrahamic faith, Jew, Muslim and Christian. She said, but they don't believe in God. I said, but they do. The Muslims call God Allah, and the Jews call God Yahweh, and we call God God. And she was going on and on and on about, if you don't proclaim Jesus as your Lord, you will not go to heaven. And I thought, here we go. So I said, have you heard of a lovely holy man called Gandhi? No, I'm surprised. I said, well, he said, I like your Christ, but not your Christians, because your Christians are not like your Christ. Well, the look I got. I couldn't quite work out whether she was a born again, Bible bashing, evangelical or a Jehovah's Witness, but she was so discourteous. And I just said, look, at the end of the day, Whatever we are, whatever belief we subscribe to, it's between that person and God. And it's not for you or me to sit in judgment and say they won't go to heaven. In fact, probably many of them will, and us Christians will be left at the gates of paradise, wondering why the gates are locked. You meet this every time you wear a habit. You go out and you bear witness. People come to you and ask you to pray with them. Some people look at you as if you're something under their shoe. But this morning I had many people say, why are you dressed like that? I said, well, I've overslept. I'm just coming from a fancy dress party. There was no point in saying, and then there was a lovely man from Scotland who said, what are you? I said, I'm a Franciscan. He said, but they only wear brown. I said, do they? As far as I know, they wear black, they wear grey, and now they wear denim. Not the ones I know. So I said, ah, well, there's always room for another colour. So we laughed, but he was quite serious. So you see, it was good for me to get out of my little cloister today, but I feel so drained, absolutely drained from being challenged but in a loving way but sometimes we have to bear witness to the truth and as long as you and I come from love and say to someone well our order embraces all the children of God it doesn't matter their color their creed their gender orientation it doesn't matter what belief they are because we're prohibited from asking a member who do you believe in? That's got nothing to do with us. It's to do with God and them. And sometimes you've just got to stand back and just in silence send them love. Even though they're not sending you love because you feel it and you just bless them and let them go. But some don't want to leave. They want an argument. They want to get into an ego battle and I just say, 
Oh, there's your bus. I must go. Bless you. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, unity. Where there is, dis where there is doubt, faith. Where there is error, truth. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is sadness, joy. Where there is darkness, light. O Divine Master, grant that I may so much as seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying to self that we are born to eternal life. Our next reading from Jesus Now by Brantz and Corita. And I'm opening it at random. Every Christian is servant. We read this the other day. Well, here it goes. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 23, verse 11 to 12, we read, He who is greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. In this world, the crown of leadership is usually given to those who are winners, who are gregarious and aggressive, who sell themselves as persons of capacity and insight, who possess special gifts or abilities that promise to grant pleasure or security or problem-solving techniques to those who follow them. This was true when Christ walked among God's creatures on this planet. It would be equally true if he were man born of woman among you today. Few of this world's multitudes would accept him as their leader. If you are delegated leadership as a result of your aspiring or striving, it is a precarious pre position to presume or assume. Those who are truly led by the Spirit of God into positions of leadership will often be considered to be losers by the world at large. This is because they follow Jesus Christ, the barefoot Galilean, and his leadership is synonymous with servanthood. It is because they, rather than resolving the conflicts and the problems of the world, point to the new kingdom and to their God, who alone can resolve the conflicts and struggles of humanity. Rather than promoting themselves and their own glory, they lead people in glorifying God. Instead of promising people success, they challenge them to make sacrifices instead of comforting them in their self-centeredness and apathy. They provoke them into accepting responsibility for the poor and the less fortunate about them. Instead of being the leaders of people, they take the lead in being servants to people seeking to lead them into spiritual fulfillment as well as responding to their physical needs. This is because they are lovers of people rather than masters of people and they dedicate themselves to communicating in, a wor in word and in deed God's saving love and grace to his creatures about them. In this manner, and measure, you are all called to be leaders and teachers, servants of your heavenly Father, Mother God. Let us reflect on those words. And now we pray the beautiful canticle of Mary, the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord, 
and my spirit rejoices in God who is my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her lowliness, henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength, and he scatters the proud-hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones, and he exalts the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, and he sends the rich away empty-handed. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers Abraham and his sons forever. Glory be to the Father, Mother, God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now we come to our evening intercessions. Peace between nations, peace between neighbours, peace between lovers in love of the God of life, peace between man and woman, peace between parent and child, peace between brother and sister, Peace, the peace of Christ, above all peace. Bless, O Christ, my face. Let my face bless everything. Bless, O Christ, my eyes. Let my eyes bless all that they see. Now let us recall the events of today and pray for justice and peace. And this evening we give thanks to God for an answer to prayer that Sister Sue's daughter-in-law, Lisa, is home from hospital to be with her husband and her family. And we say thank you, Lord. But we pray for each one of you here as well. We pray for your intentions. We pray for all that may be troubling you. And you remember the script, if anything is troubling you, or if someone has hurt you, or someone you love is hurting, name it, bless it, release it to God in a mindset of love and gratitude, and keep saying thank you God for taking this off my shoulders from my heart and allowing me to continue in my journey of loving service. Jesus invites you to call on him. Not when things are good. He likes you to say thank you, but he wants you to call on him when you're in a, in a corner, when there's strife in your life. He wants you to ask. Many people say to me, oh, but I don't like because he's got other things to do or other problems bigger than mine. I've never heard such cobble wobble in all my life. We have a duty to ask our Father, Mother, God, for the help that we need and put aside ego or what anybody might think of you, even me. You are a beloved of God. You were created by God. And it doesn't matter whether you believe in Jesus or not. The fact that you are created by our Father, Mother, God, you are a child of God. And you have a right to come to God. Whether you call God Allah, Jehovah, Creator, Source, Supreme, I Am Presence, is irrelevant. You come into the presence of love and you ask for help. Religion has a lot to answer for, for a lot of wrong theology, bad theology, and it's been found out where it has enslaved a lot of God's children into a mindset of fear and guilt and low self-worth. I pray that here on this channel you will not be enslaved to guilt or fear. You will be empowered to let it go and come to God as a beloved child of God. This evening we pray for our Father Richard and his immediate family. We pray for Sister Pam and all the members of our community, including all who are here with Sister Sue. And I want to pray for Brother Skip 
and Thomas Aquinas Kuh, who regularly look at all the recordings on Google. Bless them. Bless all our friends, bless our families, bless those who support our community, and bless those who've rejected the community because it doesn't suit their belief. We bless them and we let them go. So let us now come together as we bring the people of our world, all God's children of all faiths and none, who are hurting big time in mind, body and spirit, the people of Syria, the migrants of Calais, the people of Haiti, and those who've lost everything, those on death row, those who are incarcerated in our prisons and our young people in remand homes or correction units, those who are dying at this hour, for families who've lost loved ones or a pet, and for those who have no one to walk alongside them in prayer. For the priests, the rabbis, the imams, the monastics, the monks, the nuns, the postulants and novices who dedicated their lives to God, but for those who are not fulfilled, who are going through the motions for fear of causing an embarrassment to themselves or their family, we pray for them to be given the courage to change direction and find a loving God who loves them and let them be free. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us tonight our daily bread. Oh, forgive us the times when we've wronged you in lacking in charity for the times when we've unfairly judged another, like today. Forgive those who call themselves followers of Christ, who slander their brothers and sisters. Forgive those religions who are opposed to different beliefs and dogmas. Forgive the children of Abraham for all the historical woundedness from the beginning of time. Lead us not astray anymore, but protect us from the forces of evil, negativity, despair and disillusionment. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And our closing prayer from the little book of Celtic prayer. As I end this day, as the Son of Mary would end it, the grace of God be on this place, and on all whom God has given me, who keeps watch over us this night, who but the Christ of love. Isn't that a beautiful prayer to end our time of prayer together? So go in peace, to love and to serve our God. Amen. Namaste, Shalom, Inshallah, Paxet Bonum, Om Shanti, Solo di Caritas, Salam Alaikum, and may the peace of our God protect us, strengthen us, and walk beside us every step of this amazing journey where he has called us by name to take up our disappointments, our crosses, our failures, and follow him in love. Thank you for being here. And I look forward to your company again soon. And tomorrow morning, we have Sister Sue. So we've got a lot to look forward to for morning prayer. I wish you all a blessed evening. And for Sister Pam, I wish you, as you're beginning your new day there in California, a wonderful day. God bless.